<laughs> hey, bro. Do you ever feel down and no matter how much time you spend scrolling through Instagram or TikTok, you just feel like you should be doing more with your life? Nah, I'm not a bitch, bro. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, uh, why did I do this to me? Uh, why did I do this to me? With all that time, that free time that you would be spending on social media, what do you think you could accomplish? I'd be the new Elon Musk. Elon <laughs> well, Musk? Like, I'd be, I'd, I'd be Gen Z is one of the saddest generations by far, and the data supports it. The start of the 2000s, happiness started declining, depression rates started increasing, and as a result, suicide has grown 2% each year since 2016, when it became the 10th leading cause of death. An opioid epidemic has come out of the shadows, and when we're not popping pills or sticking needles everywhere, we're shoveling food into our faces, and obesity is growing at an alarming rate. Although divorce is at an all-time low, ironically, the number of people getting married today is also at an all-time low. If you're feeling like you have no real friends, or you're missing out on parties and new trends, or you're just surrounded by the wrong people, I'm willing to bet you've checked your social media in the last 15 minutes. I do you ever find yourselves like kind of getting sad or depressed like after being on Instagram or Facebook and looking at everyone else's fake lives and how good they are? And yeah. Do you ever feel like you're missing out on yeah. that kind of stuff? I mean, I even find myself like, you know, you see all these uh, famous people and celebrities and all that, like their clothes, the, the, this and that. You all see it. You see it all on social media uh -huh. and you think like, damn, like I really want to be that. You know, I really yeah, want to. Like, that guy's got it all. That yeah, girl's he's got, got it all, all, dude, you know. Uh -huh. But that's like the images that everybody wants on their Instagram, dude. It's so, like, right. you know, it's completely different from what you see in real life. Right. Like, I'm 22, and it finally hit me that I've grown up in an age of the fastest advancements in digital technology. I felt pretty stupid for not realizing it. 54 years ago, when my dad was growing up, LEDs, microprocessors, and LCDs were in their infancy and had little impact on his life. My generation, on the other hand, barely remembers the transition from floppy disks and cassettes to CDs, VCRs to DVDs, all the while desktop computers became laptops and then tablets and eventually smartphones that functioned as telephones, cameras, calculators, clocks, and keyboards. Today, smartphones are connected wirelessly so you can keep track of every single person you've ever met on Facebook as well as stream an entire season of Game of Thrones and sit on the couch and order anything off Amazon and order food to your house with Uber Eats. And through all that, we don't fully comprehend how much of a different world we've grown up in compared to our fathers. One of the biggest problems I see with the men of this generation is how social media has such a grip on us. On average, we're spending seven and a half hours a day screen time. And if you add that up, that's 117 days out of the year. When you're trying to be at the top of your class, the top of your business, whatever it is, that's straight robbery. How many hours a day do you think you overuse it? Probably like 12 hours, just pure screen time. Yeah. Not even if I'm like really doing it, just look at my phone, just like 12 hours, I would assume. So. And what about you? How many hours a day do you think you overuse your phone, if you overuse your phone? Uh, my iPhone told me I average about 10 hours screen time, which I figure I was a lot, so I try to cut back on my phone. Yeah, yeah. So I saw a statistic that the youth of today are using their phones on average seven and a half hours a day. And if you add that up over the entire year, that's 114 days out of the year. What do you guys think about that? That's a third of a year, basically, right? Yeah, right. No, that's a lot of time. Yeah. That is a lot of time. That's, uh, it's amazing when you think about it. Yeah. yeah how much time you look at your phone. Yeah. What do you guys, what do you guys think you could do with that time if instead of using social media or being on your screens, what do you think you guys could achieve if you had that 114 days out of the year to do something with it? What about you first? I mean, I could probably become like a doctor and it's not putting that much time in like on my phone. If I was putting that into like becoming like a doctor, or like honing a craft, I could probably, right. I could be like full time right, right now. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. uh, I probably wouldn't be this size. <laughs> I'll probably be more in the gym working out, you know, right, right. Uh, improving myself. Yeah, yeah. Very cool, very cool. If you're anything like me, you're constantly looking for ways to improve yourself and be better than the guys around you, especially the ones you respect. By far, the time I've lost to social media has had the worst impact on my goals. I know for me, it's not as rewarding or fun to watch Netflix for hours or scroll through Instagram the same way it would be to win at sports, hang out with friends, or create meaningful improvements in myself. But even on days I was feeling super productive and I wanted to work out or practice drawing or just improve myself, I'd constantly find myself opening my phone to check my Instagram or Snapchat feed, even though I'd literally done that minutes before. Do you ever find yourself just opening your phone and then, like, oh, unconsciously being on Instagram or yeah, whatnot? supposed to be texting somebody and go straight to Instagram. Yeah, yeah. 
I checked to see what people I knew or even barely knew were doing and immediately got FOMO or be jealous of the amazing things that it seemed like everyone else was doing. Even worse, I'd go to the Explore page and aimlessly scroll through content for hours and it's controlled by an algorithm that perfectly caters to what will keep me occupied the longest to make them more money. Go ahead and guess how much Instagram made back in 2019. Probably like at least half a billion. Half a million? Um, I would say somewhere around a billion dollars. Billion? I'd guess. 35 million. I'd be willing to bet probably upwards of 300 million. More than 30 million. Like 1 billion. 1 billion, 2 billion? Yeah, probably. 20 billion dollars. Thanks for making Zuck rich, bro. The second I finally deleted my social media accounts, I noticed that I had so much more free time. I wasn't worried about what others thought of me or what I was missing out on. I was able to spend more time on the things I really wanted to, as well as pick up rock climbing, get serious about weight training, read more books, and overall become more confident. I'm not going to tell you to stop using social media or even limit how much you use it, because at the end of the day, you're the one who decides what you really want out of life. One thing that made a lasting impression and helped me decide to get rid of social media and limit my screen time was a quote by the Stoic philosopher Seneca that I read in high school. It follows, Everything that exceeds the bounds of moderation has an unstable foundation. Huge shout out to all the boys who let me film them today and as well as this guy right here. He's a big brain. He was my 19th subscriber, Caleb, so thank you so much.